Composed of Gloves here, and this is another video in the FL12 effects series, The Fruity Love Filter Part 4. Today, we are finally talking about all these little menus down here, and I'm going to show you some freaking cool things about this. This is where, like, we've talked, we've, we've talked about all this, and you know about routing, so now you are now capable of making some pretty incredible decisions. You can make some incredible filter designs. Shoot, if you've made something that you think is cool or worth sharing or publishing, this is on your SoundCloud. You need to put it in the comments so that other people can see what you have done with your new knowledge because we got to help each other out. There's got to be some way to promote. So, heck, the free, but it's got to have the fruity, it's the fruity love filter has to be a main feature. You can't just be posting your crap down there. So, it's got to be a main feature. So, okay, so we're going to be talking about these things down here. If you're familiar with Citrus, uh, this is a very similar setup. So let's talk about what these things do. So we have these things called envelopes. And Harmer, they have these things too. I actually have a whole series on Harmer. Go check that out. They talk about this. I have a whole I have a whole separate one just for envelopes. There's, there's two parts, envelopes part one, part two. Look at the ones that are in-depth or later in the series. Uh, just go to the playlist. There'll be a Harmer playlist. Just go near the bottom. You'll see it. So here we have all these all these options. You can see I've messed around in here. So I'm going to go back to default because I had a few questions that uh, are pretty cool. And I've also discovered a few things that I just, I just think are dumb. But we'll talk about that. So we've got across the top here, we have our, our parameters. We have panning, so left, right, volume, cutoff, which is linked to this guy, resonance, linked to this guy, low band, mid band, and well, low band, 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 which is your mid band. Uh, technically, it is a band because it's a crossover thing, but you could picture this as your mid band. And then high band, then you have your wave shaper and your wave shaper mix. So wave shapers, uh, so the wave shaper is the wave shaper and the wave shaper mix is attached to this mix knob. These are attached to these three guys here. So you can see each one of these things, volumes attached to this volume knob, not this volume knob, I believe. And panning is attached to this. So yeah, so panning and volume, it makes sense that this would be attached here. Though that is a guess right now, but I'm fairly confident that that is the way it is. Then you have down here, you have these things that allow you to manipulate these. So these are your parameters that we, we've talked about. You know what all of these things do now. So these bottom ones though, these are ways of controlling these parameters by themselves. So you do not need to use these to do something. And now this is where setting up presets may come in handy. So if you right click up here, uh, yours may appear as a big tree if you don't have tree display enabled. I hated the big tree, so I, li I prefer this much more. And uh, I mean, as a big menu. This is a, I prefer tree display. I meant the other thing. So you have all these options that people have already set up. Now these are great and you can go through and now that you know what they do, you can actually discover, go and experiment with what they've already made so that you don't have to redo what other people have already done. But there are some powerful options down here that, that allow you to do that. So these allow you to control these parameters by themselves. So the first thing is, this is called an envelope. When you go to pattern, this is a this is something very unique to the Fruity Love filter, and it's really cool. And the idea is you can have a whole bunch of patterns and automate them. We'll talk about that in a second. But the you have envelope here. What an envelope is is it tells your stuff how to turn on and off over time. So if we put down a point, you right click. So really quick few ways of navigating this. If you hold down Control and zoom with your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out. Uh, if you hold down Alt, you you should, yeah, you zoom up and down. And sometimes, no, the alt doesn't matter. Some There's a few key functions in here that which alt you push, depending on what window you're in, changes what it does. It's kind of interesting. So we have our point right here. This top value represents maximum. So this, so an envelope, the x-axis always represents time. The y-axis always represents the parameter that you will be adjusting and moving around. And as you right, you right click, you add points, and you can right click, you have this huge menu Go and watch, oh, uh, this is the exact same thing. Go and watch the Harmer video on how to do this. This is a pretty common thing. Just go look it up. It is literally just about envelopes. So I feel like I already know all about Harmer, but I don't understand envelopes. Go there and I will literally explain everything, all these menus, even what's down here. I think this might be in part two. Uh, but now let's talk about a few things that are unique to it. So if we put an envelope down, 
assuming that you've gone and watched this or you have a fairly confident idea of what this is. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and extend that to the LFO too. So go check out the LFO as well. So, because I believe it's like the next one right after the envelopes. So we turn our envelope on and right now we have this. Oh, this is panning. You know what? I do not. I'm wearing headphones. It's going to drive me nuts. I'm going to use the cutoff. So as you see, I just switched over to cutoff and now this envelope will control my cutoff instead. So I turn that on and you can see it's working. And let's turn the cutoff up a lot. And let me see here. Let's go to something a little more drastic. Let's go to a low pass filter. All right. So it's not working the way I expect it to. Oh, you know what? It might be just the order. Nope, not the order. See, now when crap like this happens, you gotta be able to figure out what you push. There, oh, okay. So this is one of the things that I don't like. Um, and we're about to discover why. So, the way these envelopes are set up, now, given, now, at this point, I assume you've got a strong grasp on envelopes from the previous videos. This this is represents time, right? But it doesn't restart every time you hit a note. It just keeps going regardless of whether or not it's tempo synced i find this very annoying uh if anyone knows a way to make it so it doesn't do that now oh well i can think of one way so if we do the sustain we can do a loop so it's loop start and then we'll add another point whoops didn't want that loop start add another point we're going to want to start it off I'm okay with that. So, but now it loops like this. See, I don't want that. I want something that it triggers and it just goes on. Why? Well, okay. Maybe I'm complaining about nothing. Here we go. So we're going to make this, whoops, gosh, dang it. We're going to make this our loop end. And we need a point in the middle for this. You should be familiar with this from the other video. Never mind. This makes sense. It's just, it just sucks. So, here we have this. It goes up. I may need another point. Make this a sustain loop and go up. No, I need a beginning point. That's what's wrong. That's not our loop start. So our thing turns on and then we want it to loop start at the beginning and it just stays on forever. And these other points are not needed. Okay, so what I, what have I just done? And I'm kind of embarrassed that I just went through all that and just discovered this. But here we go. We play a note. And it's attached to our cutoff, or it should be. Oh, I know what's going on. Never mind. I still hate what's going on right now. So... So this is what happens. So if I hit the tempo, do something like this, maybe make it longer. You hear it working, right? But I have to hit tempo every time to do this. That's because this thing, this is, yeah, this is just annoying. Harmer doesn't do this at all. Uh, this thing sees all time and it just goes and goes and goes. So it sees this movement once and then all other notes after this, even if your stuff isn't playing, it, it just doesn't care. It just keeps going. So you have to reset this envelope by clicking tempo. And this tempo syncs it. See, I shouldn't even have to do this. And it tempo syncs it so that it links up with your tempo perfectly. So this is literally like one bar. Like you see this bar line? This is the equivalent to a bar line on FL Studio or your sequencer. I'm not sure if this is available for a VST, but you can't. I'm pretty sure it is. But it links up with your sequencer now. So it's perfectly tempo synced. So you can make this into an art using a loop. But it doesn't play this beginning part. So it goes back to the loop point depending on where it is on this grid. See, this is a very important thing to understand. I hope I'm doing justice in explaining this. So I'll say it one more time and with the way I think it's more clearly. So I, I play a note, right? And right now nothing happened. Well, that's because I've already triggered this envelope. So this has already moved past this and has gone into my loop zone, which is currently at permanent maximum. 
And so it will just go to permanent maximum and hang out there. It's never going to go back to the beginning. It'll only go through my loop depending on time. If I untempo sync it, it still doesn't care. See, that's what is annoying is it should, it should, you know, when I let go of a note, I want it to re-trigger, but there is no re-trigger option. These are all the same options from the other one. So I do have a request for image line. If you ever see this video, please change that. Uh, I love this plugin. I think it's great. Just that's just one thing that I have uh, come to struggle with. Now I can set up a loop and that is one way of solving it. So I could go loop and I could do something like that. And now it'll turn on and off. But all of a sudden creating really simple shapes has become incredibly complicated compared to like, if you do it in Harmer, it's like super easy. And I think that plugin was is developed quite a bit later. And so this is a, an older plugin. So maybe that's just what it was. They just didn't do that at the beginning. Now there is another cool thing. So, okay, so that's that. Hopefully you understood what I was talking about there. So we've got our envelope on and it's going down. And let's say this is the shape I've decided I want. And you might be saying, well, geez, well, uh, this is great and all, but it, what about what you just said? Well, there's a, there's a way to deal with this in another way. So let's say that like we go to pattern two. So each, so you have these 10 optional patterns and each one of these patterns exists for each individual parameter. So like you can have 10 separate cutoff envelopes and 10 separate volume envelopes and 10 separate panning envelopes. And by, by automating this, so you can right click and you can automate up and down through these 10 patterns. This is true for every order. Then you reset the envelope every time you do that. So this is, so that's one way of dealing with it. So let's say we could do this instead. So here we have our, uh, our pluck and let's do pattern two and turn that on. And let's say we want that shape to be like this and let's go to pattern three. You just click and drag to do that. And let's say you want that shape to be like that much sharper. And unfortunately you do have to click and drag on every single one. You do this and turn it on, go to, oh, we'll go to five. Let's say, oh yeah, we want five to hang out at the top for some reason. We want six to do this. And then we want seven just to be a linear. And we're gonna stop at seven. So now watch as I move, I'm gonna hit a bunch of notes. And so I can automate this, so I can right click, create automation clip. Here it is, the automation clip. And let's say you want specific filters at specific points in time. Well, you can do that too. You come over here, right click, uh, copy value. Now this is one, so one is obviously zero, but we can copy the value for two. And let's say, oh, here's a note. I want this to be value two. So you right click, go to paste value. This is in my, uh, how to make your first song in FL Studios thing. So if you're not familiar with that, go watch that. And then we have three, you can do that. Copy value, oh, whoops. Oh crap, I didn't want paste value. I wanted copy value. I don't think it does anything in this scenario. And here's our second note. So, oh geez, we want this to be something else. So let's make this three paste value. And then we can just go like crazy and just see what comes out, get something we like. But if you want to be specific, that's how you'd go about doing that. It takes a while, but it might be worth it. I don't know. So as we do this, so you can see the envelopes are triggering and yeah, it's just a big, it's a big pain, right? If the envelope just re-triggered on its own, then it'd be a lot easier to just flip through. So that is a uh, large request. Maybe I'm just missing a control. Maybe that's all I'm missing. If anyone knows, let me know. But that's a thing. Now we have, so that's a long enough talking about envelopes. We have LFOs. Go watch the LFO video. It explains literally everything. Now we have the same tempo thing, but in LFOs continues. It goes on forever. And you can do the same thing as you can in Harmer by doing stuff like this. And uh, you can, uh, I forgot which tool it is. You can middle mouse click and drag, or you can uh, right mouse click and drag like so. That's pretty much it. That's all there really is to LFOs. You control the speed, that thing. Talked about this. And with the tempo, it locks up with your tempo. So that's kind of a, a nice thing. So with it on, and let's turn our pattern, our uh, cutoff off. So this is all controlling just the cutoff. So you can do this individually for each parameter on one order. So you can do this for all your orders. So it's pretty mind blowing. So let's say we want it to be faster. 
Oh, I'm moving through my patterns because that automation. I don't want that. So let's uh, let's do that. So that's what that does. And high quality envelopes. I'm not sure if it affects your LFOs. I know it certainly affects your envelopes. I've heard it. And it affects just your movement of automation when you're moving the cutoff. So I think this high quality envelopes may just extend to overall automation, just dynamic processing. So that's LFO. You have this modulator X. This is something new I've, I've not covered before. But uh, here we have a little controller. So you can link up parameters to X and Y. So you can have a whole bunch. So you can set up some sort of a matrix with LFOs and modulation X and Y. And you can link them together. And as you move X around, as you can see, our value moves, our cutoff value moves. So this is where our value is. And it's got smoothing on. This is... Uh, it's got a different dynamic processing slope. So the values don't change immediately They're They've been given a slope to follow on sharp without smoothing engage. It's just bang, 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 bang. Like it plays the value that you've told her to play immediately. So it's a much sharper. I still think it has a slight curve so that it doesn't click, but that's it. So right now our value is at, so this middle line represents zero and this is all the way up. And so we could have it so that when X is all the way over, it's at zero. And uh, when it's all the way up, it's at positive 100%. So we've just linked it. So our cutoff right now is all the way up. That's another thing. The relative position of your cutoff knob of whatever control you're messing with matters. If it's only up that high, your X can only max out at this. It can't go any higher than that. So uh, let's play some notes uh, with our cutoff relatively high. And let me switch my MIDI. And let me turn the LFO off. So here we have our modulation doing the cutoff. Now let's turn it down. As you can see, I can only go up to there. So that is a thing you need to be aware of. And so we could, we could do something interesting. Now we could have it go down to negative 100%. Now, see, I'm not exactly sure what happens when you go down into the negative. It's still pretty much zero. And you can hear that wishy-washy thing. Turn on high-quality envelopes. It's a little bit better. I don't know. Maybe it's not better at all. Well, that's smoothing. So it's smoothing. Gets rid of that. You get this sort of crunchy stuff in the middle. That might be... Now, you might be thinking, oh, that sounds horrible. I don't want that. Well, when you're making distorted stuff it might actually be much more desirable. So. Oh, I guess this is zero in this regard. So, okay, this is zero in this regard. Okay, so that's cut off. You can do that for the Y. We could even map Y backwards. So it'll just undo what X does. And you can click and drag. So move this around. We could link Y up to the resonance. Like so. This is a one-to-one. -one. You can make it so that when you move it, it immediately turns on. It's on for a much longer time. So you can manipulate this by adding more points and just do weird stuff. So when Y is down here, it's like resonance is very high. But if you move it just a little bit, it goes back to being like really low. So this creates some interesting movements when you move around. <laughs> so that is some powerful stuff right there. Like that's what you could do. So we have one more mode. And I'm going to delete all of these points and move this back to a one-to-one -one and move this. Let me get my grabber tool. Okay, so that's what those do. And then we have this IEF. This stands for Input Envelope Follower. So it'll take the input that you send to the Fruity Love filter and it will say, Oh, your sound turns on really fast. Like it, it's really fast. Let me grab a loop. This is from my gloves machine loop available on my website. It's, I made a whole bunch of machine sounds. And it's on the master. So right now it's going through the love filter. But as you can see here, each of these things has its own envelope. As this thing turns on really fast. So the envelope would look something like a very fast attack. And then a very fast release and decay. Just like doom, doom. Like on, off. So if this were to go into our love filter and we were to use the input as the IEF, it would generate an envelope based on the volume of the input audio. So if our stuff turns on really fast, 
it's going to turn really fast, turn off really fast. And so this IEF uh, is that's what it does. And so you can change it so that it affects your sound on a one to one ratio, or you could do it like this. So it's a halfway ratio, you know, whatever it is you want. You can see it working. And we're doing that for the cutoff. So it's, you can hear it moving the cutoff at an outrageously fast rate. If we were to change back over to our Harmer, you see it, it does the, the cutoff stays steady because it receives a constant. So it's just like the envelope would look something like on and then stays on for like forever. Now, this gets powerful. Okay, so there's like a number of things. I'm going to talk about this. Is re you see IEF is also over here. We'll talk about that in another tutorial. So that is the IEF. That is what these are. That is what these are. Uh, if you have any questions, drop those in the comments. Let's go ahead and make a, a thingy. Let's just, let's just incorporate. So this is our previous setup. These are no longer doing anything. And you can hear our filter turning on because we have an envelope engaged so that's another cool thing when you hear stuff now you got oh man they could have used an envelope they could have like drawn an automation clip like i don't know what did they do let's turn the panning on except for let's have panning go up and back oh you know what let's think panning to an lfo that'd be kind of cool make it a faster lfo it's trippy high quality envelope wow and let's link up the resonance. Ooh, let's link the resonance to an LFO at another speed. Make it really slow. Bring up the tension. Uh, bring down the tension. And skew it a little. And if you'd like to... Fortunately, there's no way to zoom out on this, really. I guess there is. If you hold and click, you click, keep dragging. But every time you click, you zoom back in. That's interesting. Things that... Uh, if they can be improved, I mean, those are things that could be improved upon, and this could be an even more powerful plugin. And uh, I'm not going to mess with volume. Let's go over to order two, turn it on. Let's make this a high pass. And let's do uh, LFO for, the no, let's not do an LFO for the cutoff. Let's link the cutoff to our modulation X. So we're going to go down, up, and up. And so now this will control that. We're going to create an automation clip. And I want to do something just pretty simple. Let's do something like that. And bring it in. Hit Control B to duplicate. And here we have this. We could even mix it let's say like oh we like that as a background and we want it to just be like a subtle a subtlety something subtle so we could turn the volume down on this and the volume down on this then we could turn go to uh go to seven we could turn it off we could turn this on have its own input own output so it'll be original So that's pretty subtle. And then, of course, so that's the filters. But now we could do stuff with our, our patch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So uh, yeah, I'm I'm kind of messing with Harmer more now, but as you can see, I have a filter movement. This is just the creative process. You just start moving until you get something you like, and we could do a few more things. <laughs> Now you might not, you might hate this thing. So I don't, I'm not particularly fond of it. I did it just because, uh, just to give an example of that. But we could, what is that? This is the X. Let's make this less intense. And then let's turn on the wave shaper in here. Why not, you know? Uh, again, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments, subscribe because you're a blessed individual, and have a blessed day.